In the time before time, a new LEGO franchise arose and brought LEGO out of a 10-year financial crisis. That franchise was Bionicle. When it was initially released, Bionicle faced a lot of criticism because it didn't adhere to LEGO's freeform play, but it would grow to be one of LEGO's most popular themed franchises. Hi, I'm Adrian with Channel Frederator, and we're here to take you through Bionicle's conception, popularity, fall, and rebirth. So pop open that canister and grab those instructions because we've got 107 facts about LEGO Bionicle. Let's get started. <laughs> Fact number one, the LEGO group decided that they were going to shift gears and start making sets and themes with a storyline behind it. While Star Wars was the first franchise to come out of this decision, the LEGO group believed that making their own storyline would prove more advantageous to them, and so began the brainstorming. Number two, some of their first original theme sets were the Throwbots and the Robo Riders. These two LEGO themes would be short-lived, but proved to be extremely popular. Due to their popularity, the LEGO group believed that they should definitely have a theme that would be a staple to the lineup. Fact number three, one of the earliest concepts that would eventually evolve into Bionicle was Boneheads of Voodoo Island, thought up by Bob Thompson, Martin Ryber Anderson, and Christian Faber. Number four, Bionicle co-creator Alastair Swinnerton was brought on by Bob Thompson to write the story bible for the Bionicle pitch when it was still called Boneheads. As it changed, Swinnerton wanted to call it Evoids, short for Evolving Droids, and he first came up with four main heroes. But as LEGO wanted to produce six color lines, two more were added later. Number five, when LEGO came up with the Bionicle idea in 1999, it was originally to combat the rise of Pokemon's popularity. Number six, when the idea for Bionicle was pitched, it was met with skepticism from company traditionalists who believed that the story-based multi-channel brand went against the freeform play that LEGO had been built upon. Two years later, Bionicle made this story the most important selling point of the franchise. Number seven, before the Bionicle name was chosen for the franchise, two names that were in the final rounds of voting were Bionites and Afterman. Number eight, the name Bionicle is a portmanteau of the words biological and chronicle, according to the creator of the story, Greg Farshti. Number nine, the main storyline for Bionicle was created by a team of eight from all over the world who meet three times a year to discuss which part of the franchise gets which part of the story. Number 10. Bionicle had many real-life inspirations for its setting. Denmark, the LEGO company's home country, was the model for the size and some features of the island of Mata Nui. Number 11. LEGO used words from the Maori language for names in Bionicle. For example, Kopaka, the word used for the toe of ice, literally meant ice. Number 12. Alistair Swinnerton revealed that he had always wanted an Easter Island type of vibe for the franchise, but because he was unable to find a Rapa Nui dictionary, the Easter Island language, he went on with the next best thing, Maori. He also wanted to make sure he was using the language properly. Number 13. Early concept for Bionicle showed Tahu with the Vahi instead of the iconic Kanoe Hau. The Vahi would eventually become the Mask of Time and a promotional mask in the series. Number 14. The Bionicle franchise officially launched in late 2000, featuring six elemental heroes dubbed the Toa. The initial Toa released were Tahu, Kopaka, Liwa, Onua, Gali, and Pohatu, elemental heroes of fire, ice, air, earth, water, and stone respectively. Pohatu was my first set. What's yours? Number 15. Shortly after the release of Bionicle, the Maori people were upset with the use of their native and sacred language, feeling that it was disrespectful and sued LEGO. They won the battle, and LEGO agreed to change many of the names. However, some words, such as Toa, meaning warrior, remained. Number 16. The Toa were packaged in hard plastic containers, which resembled the pods from which the Toa emerged. Many fans reenacted the Toa's emergence from these canisters, so even the containers provided some fun. Number 17. The main setting for the first few arcs in Bionicle was known as Matanui. It was split into six regions, each with a village that contained village elders known as the Turaga, and villagers known as the Tohunga. Number 18. McDonald's took part in promoting Bionicle with the release of the Tohunga villager sets as part of their Happy Meals. These sets included one villager to represent each of the Matanui tribes, Jala representing Takoro, Kuki for Pokoro, Maku for Gakoro, Onepu for Onukoro, Kongu for Likoro, and Matoro for Kokoro. Number 19. Unfortunately, the word Tohunga had to be changed to avoid the Maori language dispute. Going forward, the villagers were known as the Matoran. The in-universe explanation for name changes was Naming Day, an event that saw names such as Jala, Maku, and Huki changed into Jaller, Maku, and Huki, respectively. Number 20. Most of the Matoran sets have nicknames to make it easier for fans to be able to talk about their favorite versions with one another. The original Tohunga are affectionately known as Matoran, the Mask of Life Matoran are Moltoran, the Metronui Matoran are Metruan, and so on. Number 21. The original story of Bionicle starts with Montanui and his quote-unquote brother, Makuta. While these two beings were very important since the very beginning, we wouldn't see proper sets until much later. Makuta didn't receive his first set until 2003 with the Mask of Light arc. Fans didn't get a Montanui set until 2009 during the Glatorian arc. That's a good eight years since Montanui was first mentioned. Number 22. Bionicle became a mixed media series with a story that was told through comics, animations, video games, and even television commercials. Number 23. In Bionicle's earliest years, LEGO released several short animations that would bring life to the events that happened during the Quest of the Masks, Borok Invasion, and even parts of the Metro arc.
arc. Number 24, Bionicle comics leading up to the start of the Metronui arc were illustrated by Carlos Dianda. You might notice his name from pre-Marvel Star Wars comics and another DC property, Batman. Number 25, Greg Farshti is the man responsible for much of the story in Bionicle Generation 1. He's written several of the books, comic books, and even web serials that expanded the Bionicle universe. Number 26, Lego initially intended for the franchise to last one year, ending with Matanui's awakening, but Greg Farshti helped the company see the potential in the storyline, giving life to the franchise for several years more. Number 27, of course, other than expanded media, Lego saw the opportunity for products outside of typical Lego sets. The first Bionicle board game was released in 2001 called Quest for Makuta and had the Toa hunting for Makuta while finding trouble with the Rahi. Number 28, Lego and Nike also joined forces in 2003 and launched a sports shoe line for young boys. A mask would be clipped onto the front of the shoe, making your foot resemble one of the Toa. My friends had this when I was a kid and I was so jealous. Number 29, Bionicle also had watches inspired by the franchise. They had interlocking pieces and were customizable, and I definitely had this as a kid. Number 30, early on, Bionicle also had trading cards. You can buy cards as decks, and it would contain two Kanohi in each box, one for each Toa. Fun fact, I actually bought the card deck before I had the set. Number 31, Mox, which stands for my own creation, are not new in the LEGO community. However, despite claims that Bionicle and other Technic sets went against the freeform play of LEGO, enthusiasts went on to create their own creatures, Toa, and more. Looks like LEGO could stick to their freeform play principles after all. Number 32, Bionicle went on to become one of LEGO's most popular franchises and accounted for roughly a quarter of LEGO's turnover after a financial crisis in the late 90s. Number 33, now on to the first of the movies, Bionicle Mask of Light. In 2003, Bionicle Mask of Light was released and listed as one of the most popular direct-to-video movies released, bringing in $4.24 million. Number 34, Toa Tahu and Toa Onua were both played by Scott McNeil, who has also played Flam and many other uncredited characters on My Little Pony. He also plays Zack, the male half of the two-headed dragon on Dragon Tales. Now, why would we mention that? More on that later. Number 35, Jason Micas says that the main character he voices, Takua, is similar to himself when he was a young teenager because when McNeil was young, he was full of potential, though he was reluctant to fulfill it. Number 36, the voice actors did many lines alone in a booth, the way most animations do it, but the lead actors did most of their lines together to enhance their chemistry. Number 37, before seeing the movie, Jason Micas' favorite bionicle was Tahu. In his words, I like the guy that surfboards over lava, and also the snow guy, by which he means Kopaka. Number 38, after seeing the movie, however, Micas changed his answer. His favorite bionicle became Gally, the toe of water. Number 39, Kathleen Barr, who voices Gally in the movie, also places Wheezy, Zack's female sister, and other head on his shared body in Dragon Tales. And that's why we mentioned Dragon Tales. Number 40, during the first 11 weeks of production, excited Bionicle fans were able to download a program to read short, paragraph-long production journal entries along with a corresponding image on maskoflight.com. Though that domain currently leads you to the online LEGO store, all of the journal entries and images are available on various Bionicle fan forums. Number 41, a picture of the cover page of the original script, which was shared with the production journal on week 8, shows that the movie was originally going to be called Bionicle, Mask of Destiny. Number 42, Nathan First, the composer for the Bionicle film trilogy, first got the job through his dentist, whose brother happened to be friends with the producer for the film. Guess it really is about who you know. I gotta make friends with my dentist. Number 43, prior to the movie's release, Cartoon Network's Toonami held a sweepstakes where kids had the chance to win the platinum covered Avoki Mask of Light. Number 44, back then, the Avoki Mask was estimated to be worth $7,000, but in February 2014, the piece was sold for $15,000, making it the most expensive Lego in the world. Take that, Beanie Babies. Number 45, in the Kohli Stadium during the film, Anua and Okama stand behind each other's village banner instead of their own. Whoops. Number 46, in the credits for Bionicle Mask of Light, a line reads, no Rahi were harmed in the making of this film. Rahi is the Matoran word for Montanui's animals. Number 47, according to the Bionicle Mask of Light director's commentary, the first scene of the film was actually a last minute addition and was the last animated scene. It shows stones being used to explain the world of Bionicle and the world's myth. Number 48, the majority of the action scenes of Bionicle Mask of Light were edited out of the German release, along with most of the scenes where the Rakshi opened their heads. This was because Germany had to cater the movie to a younger audience and thought those scenes were too scary for them. Number 49, the animators of the film assembled and reassembled 3,235 Bionicle pieces in order to stay true to the toys. Number 50, in May 2004, Bionicle Mask of Light won a Saturn Award, an annual award presented by the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films for Best DVD Release. Number 51, at the very beginning of the movie, the two leads, Jaller and Takua, play a game similar to cricket called Kohli. At the start of the Kohli match, the three team captains hit their sticks together and say, play well. This is a little easter egg referencing the company's name
game, as Lego comes from the Danish phrase Ligot, which translates to play well. Number 52. Events in the movie weren't fully covered in the comics, so really, you had to watch the movie to get a full understanding of what happens to the Toa, Takanuva, and Makuta in the battle between light and dark. Number 53. After the Mask of Light, Lego continued the Bionicle series with a set of prequel arcs taking place in the city of Metronui. These events would be covered in the comics, with Randy Elliott taking over as the primary illustrator. Number 54. Bionicle 2 Legends of Metronui was released on October 19, 2004. It tackled the ongoings of Metronui and lightly touched upon the origins of the Toa Metru. It was another straight-to-DVD release and was directed by David Molina and Terry Shakespeare. Number 55. One of the art designers for Bionicle 2 Legends of Metronui revealed that the airships in the movie are as big as a football stadium. Number 56. Bionicle 2 Legends of Metronui had a definitive ending because LEGO wasn't sure whether or not the third movie would be made. However, they did eventually make Bionicle 3 Web of Shadows, which takes place between the last and second to last scenes in Bionicle 2. That's why if you watch Bionicle 2 and are wondering why the ending doesn't make any sense, well, there's a little time skip in there. Number 57. Bionicle 3 Web of Shadows released in 2005 and was the only Bionicle movie that didn't have behind the scenes footage or creator commentary. There was a storyboard comparison video on YouTube, but that was about it. Number 58. Greg Farshtey revealed that the characters' looks in Bionicle 3 Web of Shadows were not canon. For instance, the Toa in Bionicle 3 had one mutated hand and one hand turned into a weapon. In the canon version, the Toa have two regular hands holding two weapons with no mutations. Number 59. After Bionicle 3 Web of Shadows, there was a drought in Bionicle movies. Instead, the series relied heavily on the comics, known as Bionicle Ignition, to further tell the story. The comics sees Randy Elliott replaced by Stuart Sager as a primary artist, taking the art style in a completely different, darker direction. Number 60. Leigh Gallagher became the successor to Stuart Sager during the events of Karda Nui. His time with Bionicle would be very brief, as he left in late 2008 due to handling too many projects at the time. Gallagher's favorite character to draw was Toa Liwa in his Fantoka form. Number 61. And our last Bionicle fact will be about Pop Mon. Mon was brought on to finish off the series, taking the comic to Bara Magna to tell the tale of the Clitorian. Number 62. In 2009, Bionicle received another movie titled The Legend Reborn. The Legend Reborn was produced by Tinseltown Tunes and Threshold Animation Studios and was more true to the aesthetic of Bionicle toys than previous films in the series. Number 63. The Legend Reborn was part of a new trilogy of films. However, due to the cancellation of the Bionicle franchise, these plans didn't come to fruition. Number 64. Montanui's shield, which was originally a Scarabax beetle named Click, wasn't going to be a transformed bug shield thing at all. Farshi thought the idea was cute, therefore it was approved. Number 65. Hina from Bionicle The Legend Reborn was originally supposed to have a Russian accent. Her name was also derived from Greg Farshi's wife at the time, Jakina. Number 66. The original run of Bionicle products ended in 2010 with Bionicle Stars, but Greg Farshi kept publishing online updates for the story for three more years. The sudden ending of the franchise left many with questions about what happened to the heroes. Number 67. With all that out of the way, let's look at some interesting tidbits throughout Bionicle's history. In several episodes of Friends, you can actually see some Bionicle action figures throughout Joanne Chandler's apartment. Number 68. Bionicle makes a very brief cameo in the Lego movie as Wildstyle tells Emmett about the larger Lego universe. It appears during her dialogue about other places we don't need to mention. Kinda sucks, I really like Bionicle. Number 69. The character John Connor from the TV spin-off Terminator, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, is shown playing with the 2008 Bionicle sets. It's been speculated that Bionicle toys were shown as a reference to the Terminators, since the Terminators have mechanical endoskeletons with an organic cover, while the Bionicle are organic creatures with mechanical exoskeletons. Number 70. After a fan asked Farshti if he read any literature for inspiration behind the Bionicle storyline, he admitted that he wasn't really big on reading sci-fi or fantasy. However, he did admit to reading a lot of comics throughout his life. Number 71. The Bionicle world has its own language, which is just English with different circular symbols to represent each Roman letter. It's no Sindarin from Lord of the Rings, but it's still pretty fun if you want to write secret notes. Number 72. It's been confirmed by the creators that Matoran don't actually have ears. They're able to hear using complicated audio sensors. Number 73. According to Farshti, like Toa Elemental Powers, the Kanoe have a limited supply of power that can be completely depleted and not recharged. However, it would take a very long time to do so. Number 74. The creators stated that Matoran don't have teeth, but the story dictated that Antroz's Kanoe Jutlin did. It turns out this was possible because he shapeshifted the mask to have teeth, making the dentures an extension of the mask. Number 75. In order to show how different the Bionicle world is from ours, the creators described three different units of measurement in the Bionicle Encyclopedia. They are the Bio, which is about 4.5 feet or 1.37 meters, the Kyo, which is approximately 4,500 feet, and the Mayo, which is around 850 miles. Number 76. According to Farshti, Matoran don't romance. At least, not in the way we would think. This doesn't mean that they don't feel 
romantic feelings at all, they simply don't reproduce. Guess he didn't want to touch upon reproduction on a kid's toy. Number 77. Some Bionicle fans were disappointed in the online serials because characters wouldn't play a large part in the overall plot. It was difficult for fans to become immersed with the first cast of characters in particular for this very reason. Number 78. Akilarak's feet are so sharp that if they jump up and spin around quickly, their feet will become a living buzzsaw. Yep, happy we don't have those in the earth. Maybe it's in Australia. Number 79. Boxer was the first Bionicle vehicle created, and it was designed to fight Borok. The Boxer could flip out its arms, and if you push the vehicle down, they would go back and release, hopefully hooking its claw into a Borok's faceplate and tearing it open. Number 80. The Exotoa armor helped drive the Barag together, but it usually interfered with the Toa when they fought, so it wasn't helpful after all. Number 81. The Borok had six armor sets, each with their own power. Levok was the only one whose power didn't match the element, which was acid as its power. Number 82. The Borok Va sets released in 2002 and were small messengers of the swarm. Number 83. The Borok Va looked pretty weird. Their head was their elemental Borok shield, and they had some weird weapons too. If you flip their weapon arm down, the Krana would shoot from the holder on its back. Number 84. The Borok also came with canisters, similar to the Toa. A special attachment was included so that the Borok can be attached to the top of the canister, and it kind of looks like they were napping, similar to the origins of the Borok in the Monta Nui arc. Number 85. On Metru Nui, Nui Jaga stingers were often the focus of hunting trips because they were considered collector's items. Number 86. Who doesn't love a fictional sport? Unlike Koli, Akilini is played in Metru Nui. It was originally played with a ball thrown through hoops, but eventually players used discs. Number 87. Those who won the Akilini Grand Tournament had the honor to go to Tom Metru, where their discs would be turned into Konohi masks. Number 88. Going to Expanded Universe, Farshti had commented that Helrix's destiny was complete, and she could now become a Toraga if she sacrificed her Toa power. But when asked what her destiny was, he replied, don't know. Never wrote a backstory for her. I had no need for it. Number 89. If you were wondering how Takua and Holly became such important characters in the story, look no further than the Bionicle video game for the Game Boy Advance and the two Matanui online games. These games feature Takua and Holly heavily and would only tease their importance to the overall story. Number 90. Lego initially had a Bionicle PC game in the works, titled Legend of Matanui. The game would have you play as the Toa and traverse the island of Matanui, using your Toa powers and kicking butt. Number 91. When developing the cancelled Legend of Matanui PC game, it was decided that the Toa would dance every time they won. I wonder, would they be good at the robot? Number 92. The most complex Bionicle set to date is the Scopio XV-1. It was released in 2009 and contained 849 pieces, 811 of which are used to build the Scopio itself. Number 93. The biggest Bionicle set was originally the Cardus Dragon, which you were able to build by combining Axon, Brutaka, and Vezon and Fenrak. But it got surpassed with the 2009 release of the Bantanui Glatorian set, which is just slightly bigger. Number 94. Bionicle was nominated for Best Marketing Campaign of the Year and won the Best Boy Toy of the Year and Innovative Toy of the Year for the 2001 Toy of the Year Awards. Number 95. The success of Bionicle inspired other LEGO-themed stories and sets, such as Hero Factory, which at one point was considered the successor to Bionicle, Ninjago, and Chima. Number 96. Responding to the fans' pleas to bring back the hit property, LEGO announced a Bionicle relaunch at New York Comic Con 2015. The new Bionicle sets develop a new storyline from its predecessors, completely rebooting it from the original run. Those at New York Comic Con were able to take pictures with the Mask of Life, grab new posters, and even get a clear version of Tahu's mask. Number 97. The relaunched Bionicle franchise had six master sets and six protector sets, this time each based around the elements of fire, earth, water, stone, ice, and jungle. Wait, jungle? Why didn't they just use air? Imagine, I am the Toa of jungle. That is my element. Jungle is not an element, guys. Air is an element, not jungle. Number 98. The new storyline took place on Okoto, a mythical island featuring Makuda as the primary antagonist once more, and his brother, Akimu, who seems to be a replacement for Matanui. The story revolves around three masks. The Mask of Creation, the Mask of Control, and the Mask of Ultimate Power. Sorry, but that last one kind of sounds a bit lame. Number 99. Lego Bionicle The Journey to One launched on Netflix in February 2016. There are a total of two seasons and five episodes. Like The Legend Reborn, Journey to One stayed true to the Lego aesthetic and made the sets look as if they were the toys, just animated. Number 100. To tease the Netflix show, the production team officially released a CGI render of Tahu. He looked just like his Lego figure from 2015, and we're talking about early 2015, but unfortunately this version of him didn't make it into the series. Instead, the series uses their uniter forms, not their master forms. Number 101. In the same show, the tribal symbols on the masks and armor 
the Toa wear depict their names, and if you thought they looked similar, that's because these emblems are a callback to the classic Nuva symbols from the first Bionicle line. A nice nod in my opinion. Number 102. Even though Bionicle has been around for what seems like forever, LEGO Bionicle The Journey to One is the first time the franchise ever got serialized. Number 103. You may have noticed that the character Liwa isn't the strongest when it comes to English grammar. This may have to do with the fact that he originally spoke in tree speak, a playful made-up dialect that combines words and doesn't have a rigid structure. Number 104. Remember the cheery Pohatu in Mask of Light? Looks like in this reboot, he took a complete 180. He's not as friendly now. He's angsty and rude. Pohatu's personality changed drastically for his portrayal in the televised show. Number 105. Lego Rebrick, a Lego-sponsored contest website, had a Show Us Your Makuta contest that ended on October 25, 2016. The competition consisted of contestants building their own version of the villain Makuta. Winners received a signed Bionicle art book. I kind of wish I entered. Number 106. Unfortunately, the journey to one was short-lived since the LEGO company cancelled production of Bionicle toys once again. So if you felt like the series crashed into an ending full of plot holes, now you know why. And what this means is that nobody is going to own the mask of ULTIMATE POWER! Number 107. Senior LEGO concept artist Matt Bedeker's final Bionicle project was the cover for the Bionicle art book, which looks absolutely stunning. Thanks for watching 107 Facts about LEGO Bionicle. Were you a Bionicle fan? What point in the series did you become one? Comment down below and let us know. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know which animated film or TV show you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your cartoons, make sure to subscribe, because remember, Predator Raider loves you.